Well, hey, everybody. My name is Willie Lawson, and welcome to the Saxophone Factory uh, and the flute department and the soon-to-be trombone department and the clarinet division as well. Again, pleasure, pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you ever so much. We have reached 900-plus subscribers on this channel, and that's thanks to you. Thank you so much. I am honored that you guys come on board and uh, didn't hate what I had to say, and I really appreciate that. Uh, one of the things that we really don't talk about enough or talk about in a way that makes sense, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is practice. Uh, you know, that phrase that practice makes perfect is almost true. And at the same time, a complete falsehood. Practice does not make per perfect. Practice makes permanent. We like to even think that practice makes better. But that's not true either. Practice makes permanent. Whatever you practice and however you practice it will become how you do a thing. That's why professional athletes try to develop, say in golf, a swing that is perfect every single time. So under pressure, they only their body only knows one way to do it. And that's why it's very, very important that we practice correctly. Now, long time ago, I was asked by my saxophone teacher at Florida State University, what do I do when I practice? I'd never thought about it. I just go down in the practice rooms and get my horn out and put up on the stand the thing I can't play and hack, hack away at it until, I don't know, I get tired or frustrated and decide that beer is a better option than practicing. <laughs> That's what I used to do. Um, I mean, seriously. Well, needless to say, it wasn't getting better. Uh, I wasn't improving. I wasn't enjoying it until, and I wish I could say I came up with this, but I didn't. It was given to me by my saxophone teacher while I was at Florida State University, um, Patrick Meehan. I am forever in his debt because of it. Um, Patrick Meehan gave me a plan of what to practice and how to practice. Uh, we often will, I often hear parents say, I are ask, how much should my youngster, they don't say youngster, uh, that shows that I'm old. I say things like youngster and pupil. Um, how, uh, how long should they practice? And frankly, in the beginning, and this goes for you too, in the beginning of your saxophone, flute, trombone, clarinet journey, the muscles that you use in your face, and you do use muscles in your face, are weak. And they're just not going to last very long before they get tired. Uh, and so we have to allow for that. When I'm dealing with fairly young players, players that are 8, 9, 10, Say, so, you know what, 15 minutes on a 15 to 20 minutes on a consistent basis, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, does fine. Because what you're developing is the is the muscle strength and muscle memory. And especially if they haven't quite got fine motor movement yet, fine motor movement is a difference between swinging a baseball bat and wagging your finger. One's a big gross smoke movement. One's more a more fine movement, right? Like petting the cat. Right, getting that to where it's smooth. So as that's developing, we want to make sure that we're not developing any bad habits and that kind of thing. So for most of you, I am of the mind a half an hour of practice a day on a consistent basis is a great idea. Just like anything else, you can't cram practice. You can't not practice for two weeks and then decide you're gonna practice for six hours to make up for it. Practice does not work that way. 
Um, so what I would suggest you do is carve out a time to practice. Parents, let your youngster practice before their homework. Yes, before their homework, and I'll tell you why. Because practice can be a very specific amount of time, 30 minutes. Set the timer. Talk to Alexa. Set the timer. And when the practice session is over, it's over. Homework, however, first of all, has to be completed. And it might take a half an hour, an hour, two hours, three hours. And then it's time for bed. And what, what I have found over my over my teaching career is that that half hour set aside just for practice of a flute, clarinet, saxophone, piano, tuba, French, whatever it is, will not interfere with the rest of the evening. It just won't. If it's consistent and uninter uninterrupted, that's the key. It's consistent and it's uninterrupted. Half hour is fine. And if you have more time, double it, make it an hour, but not until you build up facial muscles. That way you're not pressing at the end and you're not pushing and developing bad habits. I'm going to leave a chart in the description box that you can have access to that basically tells, tells you the things I want you to practice. Now, here's what I learned from my teacher, Pat Meehan. Five, in a half hour session, five minutes, five minutes of warm up. Now, if you have a teacher and you're in band, I'm gonna use that dynamic. 10 minutes of your lesson material, the next 10 minutes of your ensemble or band material, and then five minutes of warm downs. Now, warm ups and warm downs can be pretty elastic in what you consider a warm, warm up or a warm down. For instance, you could practice scales before your warm up, articulations of scales. All around, all around scales, major, minor, whole tones, whatever. Right? Get your fingers going, get, get your air factory going, get your tongue, tonguing going and all that stuff. You can get that going early and then decide, okay, when that five minutes is up, ding, timer goes off. Go right to the next one. Do not pass go. Do not go to the bathroom. Do not answer the door. Do not pick up the game controller. Don't, right to the next thing, right? Let's say the next thing is, uh, if you have a private teacher that you've decided, uh, or, or, or that person has assigned you an A2 to work on, go right to that A2. Work the problem parts of that A2 for 10 minutes. And at the end of that 10 minutes, ding, right to your ensemble material. Do not pass go, do not go, go to the bathroom, not pick up that game controller, not answer the door, don't play with the cat, right to the next thing. And it's important that this, that this is contiguous, that it's all one piece, because then it bleeds out and sucks up more time. And the whole idea of being organized is not to use more time, right? So you go to the difficult parts of the thing in the things in the ensemble that you've been working on, or you've been directed to work on, and you work those. At the end of that 10 minutes, ding, right to the next thing. Warm downs. Warm downs can be vibrato, long tones, vibrato exercises, overtones, whatever you put in your warm down routine. And we'll talk about these warm up and warm down routines in later videos, but work on those. Five minutes. At the end of those five minutes, ding, then you're done. Then you're done. Half an hour. And the next day do the very same thing. And you will be shocked, surprised, thrilled, elated.
about how much you actually get done. Imagine this. Imagine having to sit and practice scales for, I don't know, 35 minutes without break. Ugh. But if you divide that 35 minutes up into seven days, five minutes, five minutes at a time, very much doable. Very much doable. And you're developing that muscle memory and that air and that articulation. And you're developing that five minutes a day over time. And pretty soon, it's pretty easy. And that thing that you were working on in your lesson that you just couldn't get, 10 minutes a day, 70 minutes, 70 minutes, you're starting to get it, right? Same thing with that thing for your ensemble, whether your ensemble is jazz band, that, that concert band, marching band, uh, uh, a quartet, whatever it is, whatever it is. You've worked on those problems, those problem parts, and things are starting to improve. If you're working on vibrato, five minutes a day on vibrato and overtones and, and that kind of stuff, you're starting to get better because you've practiced 70 minutes over the course of the week on that kind of stuff, over an hour. Wow, I hadn't thought about it like that. I know. That's what I'm telling you. I know that you guys much prefer it when I play music, um, but you know all of all of teaching is not me playing and demonstrating. Are you playing? When you have a teacher who's a little chatty like me, and I am a chatty teacher, um, they usually have things to say. If you and think about this now, I'm not I'm not Charlie Parker. I'm not John Coltrane. I'm not Sigurd Rasher. But if you were taking a lesson with, or, or um, Phil Woods, if you were taking a lesson with Sigurd Rasher or John Coltrane, and he had something to tell you, would you get frustrated because he wasn't letting you play badly? I mean, play? If he had something to, to tell you, wouldn't you start taking that in? When Pat Meehan, my teacher at Florida State, had something to, something to tell me, I didn't get frustrated because he wasn't letting me play. Oh, no. I listened. He had something in his knowledge base that he wanted me to have, something important that he wanted me to have, that he was sharing, that he needed me to have. So if you've got a chatty teacher, I'm a chatty teacher. Put yourself aside for a second. Listen to what they're saying. Um. If I had not been paying attention to this thing that I've, I've shared with you today, when he was talking about it, if I had been distracted, why don't you just let me play? I just want to play. I just want to let me play. He just talk, talks too much. I'd have missed it. Except that I was hyper-focused on what he was saying. I was hyper-focused on what was coming out of his mouth. And I have been able to benefit from that. And in turn, my students over the past 38 years have been able to benefit from that afternoon in Tallahassee that he spoke those words to me. So these videos where I don't play, please take them into consideration as part of your journey. Listen to what people who are who are teachers who have been in the game longer than you've been, listen to what they have to tell you. I've had a panel of famous saxophone teachers here, and if they never played a note and they were willing to share with you, you would do very well to listen. Hell, I would do very well to listen. Alrighty, well, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. Uh, thank you ever so much for coming to the Tax Phone Factory. I appreciate you. Uh, please, please, please take into account what we're saying. Look into the description box below for the chart of practice. Um, I'll, 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 I'll write it very simply. Um, there's a 30 minute chart, a 45 minute chart, and an hour chart. It's easy to divide, it's easy to figure out how much each section gets. It's because everybody gets it's four sections. 
5, 10, 10, and 5, right? 7 and a half, 15, 15, 7 and a half, 10, 20, 20, and 10 for an hour, right? All righty. We got to get out of here and make them for somebody else. So until we see you again, keep playing. My name is Will Austin, and this has been the Side Phone Factory here on YouTube. Bye-bye now.